yeah, I guess you can start now. I'm sure Murat will wake up in like 10 minutes and be like, oh, damn. And then join us, as usually happens. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, Sappho. We're doing Sappho today. It's our Valentine's Day special. Um, Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Sappho was a poet. She was born around 620 BCE, which was a very long time ago. Um, Ancient Greece, the second oldest author we've got on here, not counting Homer, was definitely the oldest, but her work was really special and really popular. But she was also controversial, namely because she was, she wrote poems about how much she loved women. Um, She was also married. Her life is kind of mired in mystery. Um, She was married to a man. She definitely had a daughter, but she also had several affairs with women. Um, And this is why we call gay women lesbians uh, because she was from the Isle of Lesbos and people kind of acquainted or um, people related her with being gay. And so that's how we got the name. Lesbians, also the adjective sapphic. Um, her poetry was really popular. And so while lesbians were named after her, so was a meter of poetry, which is sometimes called sapphic meter. She was called the poetess, just as Homer was called the poet. She was really, really popular, really, really well known. And because of that controversial, there were actually some plays about Sappho that didn't mention her poetry at all. She was just like this controversial figure, kind of like a, like how you might know a lot about Marilyn Monroe's controversy 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 in history without ever having seen her acting work or music work um just like a popular figure definitely well known for being a really good poet plato called her the 10th muse also really well known for being gay so she also found some flack for that and that just kind of grew over time um as christians kind of rose up in popularity um some various popes tried to ban her work or even have her work burned Um, And even going forward through the Victorian era and so on, people just like did not like her. Uh, But she found new life with the lyric poets. So people like Lord Byron really liked her work and wrote poems based off of her work. Um, So she kind of found new life there. And then in the 20th century with the gay rights movement, they kind of rediscovered her and brought her to popularity as well. Um, So one of the most famous poets of her time, one of the most famous female poets, one of the most famous gay poets, Lovely, lovely. And her poems are very personal, usually about her loves, her dealings with romance and sex. And um, yeah, they're all very lovely and sweet. So the first thing on the list is Sappho 31. It's her 31st poem. This is one of the most complete poems. All of the poems we have from her are fragmented. Some are only a few words long. Uh, but this one is the most complete, one of the most complete that we have. And we'll be reading that. And the next we'll be reading Catalyst's response to that poem, who we read a while ago. He wrote a poem after Sappho, which is a, a poetic term that means like inspired by Sappho. So we'll get to read both of those and see how he did it. Catalyst was one of her biggest fans and proponents, um, which was very helpful. He really liked how direct she was. We know Catalyst was very direct, Um, like his poem, Stop Taking My Napkins. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) um, Fan favorite. (laughs) Fan favorite, Stop Taking My Napkins. Um, (laughs) I I, I stand clear, explicit verbal communication about boundaries. So that's what Valentine's Day is all about. Definitely. Um, So she is she didn't write as comedically as Catalyst, but she was very clear and simple. She wasn't, you know, very flowery. Uh, She had very pretty language, but it was just like, I am attracted to you and I love you, period. It wasn't, it wasn't very veiled, like was popular in the day. Last year, which kind of wild that it was a year ago, um, we all kind of picked a poem of Shakespeare's sonnets and read them. So I think we can probably do the same here. I can take the first one and then we can just kind of pick ones as we go. There are a million translations of Sappho. We're going to run into the same issues that we ran into with the haiku, uh, with almost everything we've read so far (laughs) on this show. Um, There's different translations. This one I I like quite a bit, um, but if it doesn't sound like the quotes that you've seen on Pinterest, that is why. Uh, So 
Sappho 31. He seems like the God's equal, that man, whoever he is, who takes his seat so close across from you and listens raptly to your lilting voice and lovely laughter, which, as it wafts by, sets the heart in my ribcage fluttering as soon as I glance at you a moment. I can't say a thing, and my tongue stiffens into silence. Thin flames underneath my skin prickle and spark. A rush of blood booms in my ears, and then my eyes go dark, and sweat pours coldly all over me, and all my body shakes, suddenly sallower than summer grass, and death, I fear and feel, is very near. Wow. I feel like it has like a very intense progression there at the end. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, um, I would love like a juxtaposition of this with the Shakespeare sonnet where he talks about how Maddie is about the fair youth dating the dark woman because it feels like the same theme, but so different. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting. It's like this kind of, um, it's not, quite jealousy i would say it's like envy like she wishes wishes oh my god i can't speak today she wishes she could be as strong as this man is because he's able to sit next to this beautiful woman and talk to her and isn't sweating and having a panic attack like she is um he can just speak with her normally and yeah (laughs) um and so she's like god like i wish i i could do that um and yeah, I like that you brought up Shakespeare's poem because I feel like there's a lot less um, like possessiveness, you know, over her, but he, she's still like, you know, wishing that she could be there. And like less anger, it's like, it's like internalizing versus externalizing. Like Shakespeare's like, I hate everything about all of the people who made this happen to me. And Sappho's just like, I, this is contained inside, like these feelings are contained inside of me. I just feel like um, it's in, like, I can only picture it in, like, a cafeteria setting. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Yeah. It does feel, yeah. Yeah. Like, someone sit down next to your crush and you're just getting, like, so panicked and irritated. (laughs) It's like, not only can I not eat because my tongue is so stiff in silence, (laughs) but... (laughs) Death, I fear and feel, is very near. (laughs) It does feel dramatic, like high school, Mm -hmm. you know, life or death crush, definitely. I also agree with Catalyst. It is very direct. It feels like it's it's extremely to the point. It's like a very clever, like, positioning of the narrator um, to make it interesting, being like, oh, look how good this guy is. He can hang out and not freak out and run away mm-hmm. so cool and so like that tells a really cool story in an interesting way but it does it so very straightforwardly and and that i feel like is it definitely a strength of the poem i suppose um i know we were talking about she doesn't feel jealous she just feels nervous but i suppose you could read the last two stanzas as like anger over him like jealousy um like the flames underneath the skin could either be like that nervous attraction or it could be like anger. Um, It could be a mix of both. I did think jealousy at first. Mm -hmm. Um, When you get to the last line. (laughs) Yeah. I I feel like that is a lot more panic. I mean, it it feels less like, like, jealousy because it's not really directed towards him it's more just like why can't I be like that Mm -hmm. like why can't I just have this easy way with you and like be comfortable like all of my (laughs) physical reactions are preventing me from connecting with you in the way that seems so easy for him and he's just like laughing and talking with you like no big deal can you imagine if it's one of those scenarios where like the guy and your crush are actually like okay now like say something funny to like get their attention (laughs) (laughs) they like don't know the panic that's happening (laughs) right (laughs) 
since we've talked about translation so much, if you want to, we can look at a different translation of the same poem and kind of see, compare. Mm -hmm. Could be kind of fun. In my eyes, he matches the gods, that man who sits there facing you, any man, whatever, listening from close by to the sweetness of your voice as you talk, the sweetness of your laughter. Yes, that, I swear it, sets the heart to shaking inside my breast, since once I look at you for a moment, I can't speak any longer, but my tongue breaks down, and then all at once a subtle fire races inside my skin. My eyes can't see a thing, and a whirring whistle thrums at my hearing. Cold sweat covers me, and a trembling takes a hold of me all over. I'm greener than the grass is, and appear to myself to be a little short of dying. But all must be endured, since even a poor... <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's all we got. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, uh, it starts off with, like, making it less directly about one person mm. as any man, whatever. Yeah. That line makes me wonder if it's, um, it makes me feel like maybe the subject of her attraction, it never really specifies if it's a woman, though we're assuming it is, but it makes me feel like she's maybe straight. And it's kind of like, if I were a man, like any man, whatever can talk to you and it's totally fine, you know, like has a chance with you, but I don't, um, that kind of adds that, layer to it right it almost makes the like that the man not matter at all it's just like there's just like this faceless like entity that represents like mm. your object of desire and then i'm over here and it it feels like a still life like it feels like it's like the description of the man and the object of desire like they're sitting here there's laughter like it's a captured scene and then Sappho describes herself as like alive and describes all these like really vivid like action like ongoing experiences which is really interesting it's like freeze frame over here and then like it's like time stops and she's experiencing all of this stuff <clears throat> the slight differences are noticeable in like uh the first one uh sets the heart in my ribcage fluttering versus sets the heart to shaking inside my breast. <laughs> mm. It's a little bit difference in the imagery there. I agree. And I like um, my tongue breaks down. I like that a bit more than um, stiffens into silence. Mm -hmm. It's funny too. Um, in this, in the newer one, not newer, but the one that we opened second, um, greener than the grass. Mm -hmm. you know it's like green as jealousy which I originally like when I read that I was like oh that must be like a translation thing like she used a different comparison because that feels very modern like green with envy but then in the other translation it still mentions grass um yeah. sallower than summer grass so maybe it's not actually a new saying like green with envy whatever or like well I mean, my reading of it was that because ancient Greece had like a different color system than we did, oh. right? That whole thing with like the wine dark seas, blah, blah, blah. So like, I don't know if this is true, but my instinct is that it's pale. Mm. So it's like light color, light blue and green and like that pale area of colors. But I don't know if that's necessarily true, but that I feel like because the other one was sallower than summer mm -hmm. grass and this one is greener than grass. I feel like my instinct was that it was like turning pale during the course of that panic attack that she has when she talks to this woman. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It's like pale, like dying grass, which is close to death. She mm -hmm. feels. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, I feel like the second one we read is more like, let's let's just decide that it's jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The first one we read definitely feels more modern. I don't know when they were written, but the first translation feels more modern. So this translate, the first translation was originally published in Agni, which is a literary magazine. Okay, so that was in 2016. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, the Sappho book, which is the second one we read, was published in 2007. So it is a little older, but not okay. dramatically. Okay. That's okay. It felt older to me than that. But that's that's really funny then. Yeah. 
They just tried harder to make her feel older. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So would someone like to read Catalyst's 51, An Imitation of Sappho to Lesbia? He seems equal to the gods, to me, that man, if it's possible more than just divine, who's sitting over against you endlessly, sees you and hears you, laughing so sweetly that with fierce pain I'm robbed of all of my senses, because that moment I see you, Lesbia, nothing's left of me, but my tongue is numbed, and through my poor limbs fires are raging, the echo of your voice rings in both ears, my, ear- my eyes are covered with the dark of night. Your idleness is loathsome, Catalyst. You delight in idleness and too much posturing. Idleness ruined the kings and the cities of former times. So kind of like similar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm so stupid that I don't do anything about it. <laughs> One thing I wonder is like, so Catalyst is Roman, but was still writing about 2000 years ago, um, which 600 years after Sappho, but 2000 years before us. So I guess I wonder if like that is referencing a stanza of Sappho's poem that we lost, which I guess we'll never know. Yeah, because the like the other translation had the beginning of that missing stanza. Mm-hmm. It was like, but whatever, and then like goes on to do something. So that might even be where like the crux of the imitation comes in. It's like, oh, it's the same throughout the rest of it, but then could play on the differences in that, which would be really funny for the modern re- reader to be like missing out on that. Yeah. You know what's wild is that Catalyst to Sappho is like the same time difference as us to Dante. Ooh. And like, it's a different language. It's 600 or so years. Like, I feel like we think about antiquity as it's like this one vast, like, block of old poems. <laughs> and it's so interesting to think about. Like, clearly, Catalyst is, is, like, so inspired by Sappho, and it's, like, very clearly derived from, but, like, thinking about the kind of poetry that was written 600 years after, and the kinds of, like, you know, obviously, there's, like, some big, big technology and, like, societal differences between us and medieval times, but, you know. What I'm hearing is we should rewrite the Inferno. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think we should retell the Inferno through the narrative tool of an amusement park. <laughs> <laughs> an amusement park after Dante. <laughs> after Dante. Ooh. An imitation um, of Dante. <laughs> an imitation of Dante. Six, 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 five is an imitation of Dante. <laughs> Great. <laughs> the book notes that Lesbia is a woman that Catalyst was pining after um it's just a like coincidence that it also sounds like lesbian um but perhaps that is why he decided to use Sappho as an inspiration to the poem to lesbia knowing that she was from lesbos and all of that is are we are we certain that this person existed or was it like andros gynecos of (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> lesbia um there are other poems if i remember correctly that catalyst wrote to lesbia um i mean but she like, could was, be was lesbia a fictional beard <laughs> who is to say <laughs> no one yeah. we cannot know we cannot know okay <laughs> the the joke okay viewers is that um sappho at one point had to say who she was married to and the translation of the person she was like married to was man from Dick Island. Um, <laughs> the, the thing being, she actually did have a daughter, supposedly. Like there's records of her having a daughter. So she must have had relations with men at some point, but um, maybe she wasn't married. Maybe she was, maybe that was actually his name. That would be wild. Uh, we don't really know, but it, se- it certainly seems like it was a joke. Pack your bags. We're going <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I want it for all bachelorette parties. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Big unless, Island and Lesbos. Yeah, unless you're into women, then you go to Lesbos. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think what I'm hearing is that I need a boat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can have a great bisexual cruise and go to both islands. Well, for a pleasure cruise in the in the alien <laughs> islands. Yeah, maybe if we get um, enough subscribers. <laughs> on dick subscribe so we can do a pleasure cruise in Dick Island. <laughs> Please help pay for our bisexual boat. <laughs>